Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. In this video, I'll show you how to get the most out of Adobe Audition by teaching you all the sections of the Adobe Audition Preferences menu. This is a mini series. Today, I'm focusing on markers and metadata. Let's dive in. Now, please, if you're really enjoying these videos, do hit the like button on this one. Remember to also subscribe. And if you never want to miss another video, ding the bell as well. Now, in Audition, you can place things called markers, and these are relevant in most audio editors. They usually show where errors are or edit points are in an audio file. And if I go into the Preferences menu, Control, Comma, or Command, Comma on Mac, and into Markers and Metadata, you'll see here Include Markers and Metadata by default on Save As or Export. You really want to leave that ticked because that means every time you go File, Save As, it will include the markers and metadata in the file you're saving. If you don't have that ticked, all these markers will be cleared, and uh, when you hand it off to the next person, all the markers will be gone. So generally, I'd advise leaving that on. Back in here, lock markers and metadata to the timeline. Again, you want this unticked. And I'll give you an example. If I delete some of this audio, watch these two markers here, those two markers still stay in sync with the audio uh, that I wanted them to be on. Let's undo this and move back up. There we go. Go back in and we'll go ahead in markers and metadata and tick that. So they're locked in time. And now when I delete, zoomp, everything budges up and the markers are no longer selecting on the audio, uh, but they've budged to some silent piece of audio. Uh, so really very undesirable, particularly if you're trying to mark edit points in a podcast. So untick that and keep it as is. And we'll just undo that little edit there. So we are back to normal with our markers indicated by the little tabs at the top and the lines across the waveform. Now we'll go back in. And for some reason, I always love minimizing uh, Adobe Audition. Uh, it's actually Control comma, not Control M. <laughs> I'm thinking of markers uh, or control, uh, Command comma on your Mac. Back in here, include... Um, sorry, add marker changes to undo history. You really want this ticked. And the reason why is if I go into the history panel, which is just nice and big, just above me here, and I add some markers, all those markers will be added into my history. So I can go back and undo those actions if I should need to. Uh, so really, it's a handy thing to leave enabled because uh, markers become part of your undo history. Uh, then we've got include markers when performing a cut or copy. Yes, by default, we want this. If I copy this audio, so control or command C, start a new audio file, control or command V, those markers are then included in the copy. So very handy thing to have. And again, back into audition, very much into <laughs> having things minimized at the moment. Right, let's go back in and back into markers and metadata. Uh, show marker lines in the editor panel display. Untick this and boom, all the marker lines go. They just show up here at the top. So really, we definitely want that ticked because it makes them more visible. Include markers and metadata in recordings and multi-track mix downs. So if I were to have this in a multi-track session, let's create a multi-track session bring that in. There are the markers. If I was to then go ahead and multi-track mix down the entire session, uh, it's not got any of those markers there when I have mixed it down. Include markers and metadata in recordings and multi-track mix downs. So ideally, we want that to be in the recordings and multi-track mix down. So if I was to go ahead and now place markers in the multi-track, let's do that where those current markers are or roughly where they are you will see that now when I mix down, all those markers will be included. If I had that unticked, let's go back into Adobe Audition. Uh, and uh, so let's go into the markers and metadata and show include markers and metadata in recordings and multi-track mix downs. Now, when I go ahead and mix down this session to file, none of those markers are included. Uh, so let's tick that back on. Embed edit original link data in multi-track mixdowns. You want to leave this ticked, particularly if you're working in Adobe Premiere Pro. What this will allow you to do is go ahead and edit the original uh, in a multi-track inside Adobe Audition. So if you made some real changes in Audition and then using direct link, you brought it back into Premiere, uh, you'll have all that data retained. Otherwise, if you untick this, none of that data is retained, and that's really not a good idea. 
metadata display on the files panel. If I click this, this will just show you what is available to you as metadata for your audio files. If I untick duration and click OK, duration is gone now uh, from my files panel. So generally I want this all clicked. Most of your stuff is all ticked here and you want to leave that as so. But you can remove stuff maybe you don't need like the access order or frame rate or anything. But by general, I would leave this default. Metadata panel, that's another kettle of fish. That will load up a panel over here to add your ID3 tags or other tags. Uh, and you can, again, choose what's appearing on your metadata panel here. You'll know if something is necessary or not if you work with metadata. Uh, but generally, I leave this as default. Handy here are the default names for new Q markers. Usually they're markers, but we can call them Q instead. Click OK. And now I add a marker in M and it's Q1. Q2. I can even go into the uh, preferences menu again, markers and metadata, and I can call it Mike uh, and click OK. And then it's going to make all my markers Mike 3, Mike 4, Mike 5. Uh, but by default, of course, uh, you would go into the marker here. Uh, and generally, I would call this a marker. So let's call that marker. And finally, in this very minimized session, I keep hitting the control M instead of comma. Definitely got a bit of a slip today on the keyboard. Default CD track pause. This is very, very old school. If you're still writing CDs, what century are you living in? Uh, but yes, uh, by default, you can leave a pause of two seconds between tracks on a CD. You can increase or decrease that if you wish. Uh, but by default, I'm not even going to change that. I don't write CDs anymore. Hopefully that's helped you with your markers and your metadata, but not your minimizing, which as you probably learned is control M in this video or command M on a Mac. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more about Adobe Audition, do go and enroll in one of my courses. They're all available at mrc.fm forward slash learn. That is mrc.fm forward slash learn. <laughs>